The Spring ecosystem is rich and contains solutions for all sorts of problems. One such problem is running scheduled tasks in the background, which can be achieved through the use of the scheduled annotation. All right, here we go. So this time around, we're going to be using scheduled. So scheduled is a way of setting off tasks that run in the background. And there's a couple of different ways to say how and when they should run. So we're going to explore, first of all, using a fixed time limit. So we're going to say every five seconds, do something. And then we're going to use the cron notation, which is a way, a convention of specifying how often something should run. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is the Books Java Spring Boot application that we've seen a couple of times now. So this is very, very basic REST API, CRUD REST API, but we don't need to go into any of the REST API stuff today. The reason I'm building on top of this is because this already has some repositories for dealing with books. So if we just take a look at this class, for example, um, very, very basic, well, it's actually an interface. So this is uh, a spring at repository annotation. And that's a way for spring to actually automatically generate a repository. So a way of dealing with our persistence layer for us. And we're using this because as an example, I want to have a scheduled task, which simply prints out the number of books in the database at any given time. Now, chances are you won't do something like this in production. I don't know, you might do, but this is uh, a way for me to demonstrate the scheduled task in a really basic way. So that is the repository that we're going to use. Let's first up write our scheduled task, shall we? So the way that we're going to do that, let's create a new directory inside of here, shall we? So, and we're gonna call this one scheduled. So I'm now going to create a new file and I'm just going to call this one, um, let's say bookwatcher.java, create a class for us. Now inside of bookwatcher, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to declare a public method and in that public method, I'm going to um, put the business logic for our scheduled task. Let's go public void because we don't want it to return anything. And I'm just going to call this one print book count. There we go. And inside of there, we're going to need to get the count of the number of books in the database. And the way that we do that is with that repository that we were talking about earlier. So I'm going to declare the book uh, repository right there, book repository. And the way that we're gonna get hold of this is with a uh, with auto wired. So Spring's going to use some dependency injection to put it in there for us. So public, and then it's the book watcher. And we want to take a book repository and we want to assign it to this book repository. Okay, so just talk through this. So this is the, obviously the constructor for the class and we're passing in uh, the book repository and then we're assigning it to the local instance variable here. Now, because we are using the constructor in this manner, we're actually able to declare this as final, which means once it's assigned, it can no longer be changed, which is best practice. And it makes things less confusing in the long run. You can see that I've also put a final next to the um, variable that's being passed in here as well, because we're not going to reassign that at any point. Now, in order to tell Spring that we want it to auto wire the book repository in here, we're going to, there we go, we can import the auto wired annotation and to put the auto wired annotation above the constructor here. So when the application starts up, Spring will look for the auto wired annotations, find one here and go, hey, this one's a book repository. I have one of those. And then it will put that book repository as an argument into this constructor. And then it will ultimately get assigned to this local instance variable here. In order to uh, tell Spring that actually this is a class that you wanna look at, this is uh, this is a class which has auto wired annotations, for example, and potentially could be injected itself as a part of dependency injection, we need to tell Spring with an annotation. Now you've seen the at repository annotation, and there's another one, there's the at service, but we're going to use the generic at component. Now, honestly, they all do the same thing. They're just more descriptive. Um, this is a service, this is a repository. Uh, this one's a really generic component in the sense that the only thing that's ever going to be in here is that scheduled task. And there isn't, as far as I'm aware, an at scheduled task annotation in the same way that there's like an at service. So we're going to use at component. We now have our book repository. So, oh, actually, let's also do another annotation up here just to make things a little bit more simple as well. And this is leveraging Lombok, which if you remember is a library which has a whole bunch of utility methods. I suppose that's not the right way of putting it. It makes your life a lot easier and quicker and simpler. And one of the ways it can do that is with this annotation here, which is at self 4 j And then this makes a local instance variable log available to you. So we can then do log.info inside of here. See that it's picked up that log actually exists and that's because self 4 j has made it available for us. And now inside of here, we can go something along the lines of there are, and this is, uh, this will be a placeholder. This will be swapped out. There are uh, many books in the database. 
There we go. And then we can pass in the number of books, which for the sake of argument, let's assign that to its own variable. So book repository uh, dot count, and that will give us the count of the number of books. And then we'll assign that to a variable here, which we we'll say is called book count. And then we'll just pass in book count here. And there we go. So this, this public method, which doesn't return anything, simply uses book repository to get the count of the number of books in the database. And then it just prints out a line. And that line is there are that many books available in the database. Now, the magic of how we get this to run scheduled is with this annotation, which can you believe it is at scheduled. And this has several arguments that you can provide to it. Now I alluded to it earlier, but the first one that we're going to use, and let's see if we can get a list, here we are, is the fixed delay. So we're going to say uh, how many milliseconds that we want it to wait between executing. And I want it to run every five seconds. So I'm going to type that value in there. In a nutshell then, we put at component at the top of this class that we've just created, which tells Spring, hey, take notice of this class and also inject using dependency injection. We've also used auto wide, which declares that, hey, we want to uh, use dependency injection here. We want a book repository, which is already going to exist, assign it to this local instance variable. And then we're going to use the book repository to print out how many books are in the database. And we're going to do that uh, as, a, as a scheduled task that runs every five seconds. That's the theory. Let's see if it works. So we can just zoom out quickly, go to new terminal, zoom down to the terminal, and we're going to run our application. So let's, um, Spring Boot Run. So this is a plugin. This is a Spring Boot plugin that comes along with uh, when you download something from the initializer, basically allows you to run Spring Boot from the command line. So we're just going to run this application. It's going to start up and hopefully it'll pick up our scheduled task. Oh, of course, silly me. So I'm going to use the Maven wrapper because I don't have Maven installed on my, uh, on my system here. So if we go up here, the Maven wrapper is essentially this, com uh, this uh, command on, on Linux or Mac. And all of the guts of it are in here. And uh, oh, here's the uh, here's the Windows one if you're on Windows. Let's uh, go back down here and then run spring boot run. Okay, so our application started up. Oh, starting up. Looking good so far. Started the application in a couple of seconds. Huh, doesn't seem to be running. Silly me. And I know exactly the reason for this. We forgot to, or I forgot, to add another annotation. And this is basically the annotation that tells Spring, hey, inside of this project, there are scheduled tasks. Look for them. So we're going to uh, we're going to tell Spring just that. So we need to go back to, there's a couple of places you could put this actually. You could put this in a configuration file all by itself um, inside of a config directory, which currently doesn't exist. Or we can go to the entry point here where we've got the at Spring Boot annotation. And we're going to add another annotation, which is enable. And let's see if it gives us a, a list. There we go. So you can see here, this is a convention that's used by Spring to enable various different uh, bits of additional functionality. And the one that we want is this one here, which is enable scheduling. So that's enable scheduling there. So let's go down to this terminal once more and then run the application. Okay, and we can see here, there's the book watcher and it's saying that there are no books in the database. Zero, there are zero many books in the database. Okay, maybe maybe a bit of a grammar issue there, but ultimately it's printing out there are no books in the database. Now I want this to have a book in the database. So then I'm gonna flip over to Postman and create one via the REST API. If you found this useful so far and you wanna see more content just like this, then be sure to subscribe. And we can see here, this is the endpoint that we we'll use to create a book. So we've got the put, uh, HTTP verb specified, and then we've got forward slash books, and then the ISBN, which is the unique identifier of this particular book we're going to create, and all of the details for the Wind of the Willows here. So if I go ahead and send this away, we've got a 201 created, and it looks like the book has been created absolutely fine here. So we flip back over to the application, we're expecting there to be one many books in the database now. There we go, and we can see that there are one many books in the database. So this has created a book in the database, and our scheduled task is running every second and then printing out that there is one book in the database, confirming what we expect. So now we're going to use the cron. Now the cron inside of Spring differs ever so slightly in terms of the standard cron that you would expect. So the standard cron has five fields, but the Spring cron has six, which basically allows you to get down into that per second detail. So that might not make sense at the moment, but don't worry because we're going to uh, explain it now. So I'm just gonna stop this application from running. 
and we'll zoom up here. In order to do the cron, we need to delete the fixed delay and we're going to type in cron and then we expect there to be a string. Now, if we wanted to run every single second, then we would specify a string that looks a little bit like this. Let's see if I can remember the order. So the first one is seconds and the second one is minutes and then we've got hour and then it's day of the month, I'm pretty sure. And then it's the month. And then I believe it's day of the week, which is an option. And if you specify a asterisk, like I've done here, it means for every. So this will basically run every second, every second. So we'll do that. And then we're going to change this to uh, run every single minute. So we'll just go roll down here and let's start this application again. There we go, and we can see it running every single second. There are that many books in the database. So let's make this run every minute now. Let's cancel that. If we scroll up, there it is. So now we get to edit this string. Now we don't want this to run every single second. We want this to run at the beginning of each minute or at the zeroth second, if you will. So we are going to type zero in here and leave the rest as asterisks. And in doing so, this will then continue to run every single minute. So let's scroll down here and rerun the application. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And now we wait. Okay, so there's the first record come in. Let's see if we can grab a timestamp for it. There we go, so it's at 42. We're expecting it again to run at 43. So we wait again. There we go, so there's a second entry and it's run at 43. So that cron seems to be running absolutely fine. Now we could spend uh, an age of an eternity trying to explain the details of the cron, but there is a resource I'd like to point you to instead because actually using it and trialing it out is the best way to learn about the cron in my opinion. So. This seems to be working absolutely fine. Let me show you this resource. This is Crontab Guru, great resource, and I've used this for years and years. Now, if I just show you how this works here, we can see that we've got a cron, and it's telling us it's going to run random cron uh, next at this timestamp here. And in a plain text, it's going to run at uh, midnight, well, five, five minutes past midnight in August. Now we can play with this and say, well, if we were to put like a five in the hour, it will run at 5.05 in August. And this is a really great way of, uh, of learning the cron because you can just tap it in and it will tell you in plain text what it means. Now, it's worth remembering that this has only five entries, the minute, hour, the day of the month, the month and the day of the week. We just covered that spring has an additional entry, which I suppose would sit on the left-hand side of this, which is seconds. For me, I don't know if the same for you, but the seconds are probably the easiest thing to uh, to reason about rationally. So, you know, set it to zero if you if you don't care about them or, you know, mess mess around with the various values that you got. But ultimately, this will allow you to uh, to figure out like 90% of your cron and then it just leaves you to work out the, the seconds. Uh, but we've just done an example of that one. So hopefully it should be uh, straightforward for you in future. So let's go back to the code. So in a quick, quick summary then, we have created a new class and we have made a component and we've uh, we've made a log available for this. Inside of this class, we've got hold of the book repository using dependency injection. That's what that auto wired is all about. And we have specified a couple of different ways of running this scheduled task, which is essentially just a public method, which just prints out how many books are in the database. And we've used the, uh, the fixed, which allows us to set the uh, number of milliseconds it, that it should run between, or the number of milliseconds between each run. And we've also used the cron, mentioning that Spring has a special cron with an extra field for seconds, uh, but cron tab guru will allow you to figure out most of the cron in future if you want to use that way of doing things. So that in a nutshell is how you do schedule tasks inside of Spring Boot. And that's how you would use the schedule annotation in Spring to schedule background tasks. Now, if you're interested to know how we built that REST API in the first place, be sure to check out this tutorial where we build it completely from scratch using Spring Boot. I'll see you over there.